everyone. Welcome back to the CCO Follow podcast. Last week, we introduced the topic of fasting and prayer, and we had Kirsten Nelson on, and she she really gave her, her testimony in, in what this whole idea of, of fasting and prayer looks like in her life. And uh, we were really excited to, to start that and for that to be the, the first kind of episode of this month. Uh, but now we're going to talk a little bit about prayer and in particular how we pray. And so we have Isaac Knopf on. And Travis, when, when we were kind of thinking, you know, who, who kind of should we have on for talking about how we pray? And he was the first person he thought of was Isaac. So why, why Isaac, Travis? Yeah, so, um, you know, many of you who know Isaac, especially uh, those of you who are in the young adult or maybe seniors or juniors in high school, um, recognize that Isaac is very much someone who prays a lot and uh, prays in pretty much any context. Because there's different, you know, there's there's the context of praying, you know, in your, your closet, as, you know, the Bible would say, yeah. uh, but also in public, not to gain um, notoriety, but because you're that's where people are. And so... Um, we're called to, to pray at all times, you know, at, in a, uh, a recent young adult event there, I saw a few pockets of people praying and, um, just, you know, it was literally our, our friends giving. So like people are just hanging out and having fun. But then I also saw people just praying for each other. Cause there's people out from school. They haven't yeah. seen in a while. Mm-hmm. They're like, Hey, let me pray for you. Right. And, um, I walked into one of them and teased cause you know, we have that kind of relationship where I was like, who do you think you are? You think you're Isaac or something? And they were like, <laughs> we legit just said that when I, when the other one offered <laughs> to pray for me, funny. um, he's, he's just a really, you know, you're just a very prayerful guy, Isaac. And, um, one of the stories I, I love most, um, is that, uh, there was a bunch of young adults in, I think it was July mm-hmm. who went to sound of freedom. And, um, when the, if you're not familiar, it's about human trafficking and things. And, um, at the end of the, the movie, um, Isaac, uh, took all the, the people, they were all together and he was like, you guys, we should really like pray about this real quick. So they left the theater and um right i guess you know left their their exact theater and and when they're outside of it um they just paused to pray and you know i know isaac i know your heart um and uh he's not doing it for you know showmanship he's not doing it for attention it's just like hey we should pray now like we should not delay let's pray while we're still together about this issue um but what's really cool that you're not aware of isaac is that um just a few weeks ago, there was someone in our church who approached me and they were like, Hey, there's this person I have known for years. And, um, he, uh, has kind of gone on and off with his faith. And he saw this group of young adults praying outside the theater. And it, the pers- uh, this person has not gone to CCO. Never, that. not part of Calvary. I just happens to know before. someone at Calvary. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Okay. No, I know he hasn't heard this. This is why I thought it'd be Whee! fun. <laughs> and, um, and this person decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to go to church. And he just Googled churches and came to our church and he happened to know this guy. He's like, Hey, what are you, what are you doing here? And he's like, you know, honestly, I just saw this group of young adults praying outside of uh, the theater and thought like, you know what? Like I, I need to seek, seek God. And, um, it was so cool when we found out not only did he end up going to our church, um, but, uh, you know, he, he came because of young adults from our church who were simply praying about things that were important to God and he put on their heart. And so they obeyed. That's pretty cool. And so you never know what kind of influence, um, you know, you're going to have on someone. And I know you're not doing that for the attention. I've seen that many times over that I know that to be true. Um, but it's cool how God uses things. Yeah. So, okay. Now that Travis brought up that incredible story, tell us a little bit about, do you remember that at all? Uh, yeah, well, I remember sitting in the theater after the movie being really moved by yeah. it. Um, I'm definitely like more of an emotional person. So those things definitely pull on my heartstrings. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of times when I feel like in those situations where I'm faced with, yeah, if you haven't seen the movie, it's about uh, sex trafficking. Mm-hmm. So uh, pretty, pretty bad stuff. And mm-hmm. I think like, you know, like, what can I do about this? You know, like, yeah. who, like, like how, how can like goodness be a part of this thing? That's like greatly evil. So a lot of times that doesn't mean that I can immediately do anything besides just pray. So I felt really strongly <laughs> yeah. that I needed to pray about this. And I kind of sat in the movie theater thinking, you know, it would be great to be able to pray together, but like also having that like tension of like, well, I don't want to like put myself out there. That's yeah. scary. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how people are going to react. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just sitting there for a while and really feeling like that was 
an important thing that God mm. wanted me to do. And then eventually just, you know, getting up there and saying, Hey, you know, let's, let's pray about this after we're going to pray outside the theater. If you're interested, you can join us, but, uh, yeah, let's do that together. And I think me, <laughs> and I barely got that off because I was, I was pretty, uh, I was like about to cry myself. So yeah. I just kind of like, <laughs> you know, uh, slowly getting my way through the, the last bit of words. But, uh, yeah, then we, then we went outside and, and prayed together. And I was actually really encouraged by the people who who prayed with us. Yeah. Um, These are people who like, were just in the theater that you didn't even know or anything like that? So I went with uh, a couple friends from church. Yeah. And then there was probably like 10 people who I didn't know who joined us. Wow. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really... I feel like it was a really um, encouraging moment for myself yeah. just to see everyone come together and pray about this thing that was, uh, that's really terrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, it's cool now to see, I mean, just some fruit that came from it. I, I love that, mm-hmm. you know, like, what are the odds? Yeah, you right. Know? But God <laughs> works that way. And when we're faithful and like, like you said, I, I love that you like prayer and we're going to talk about this probably more um, mm-hmm. as, you know, this episode rolls on, but prayer is it's not something that just we check off. It's not something we just do, but it's, we, there's a, there's the spirit tugging at us in certain aspects. Sometimes when we pray Mm -hmm. and it's like that conviction of like, I, I should like, like we should pray about this right now. That didn't come from, you know, just your good well being. It came from this, this tug and it was kind of hard. You were like, I don't know if I want to do this. I was on the fence, you know, Uh, feeling a little bit uncomfortable. But just seeing the, the fruit of like God just providing in that aspect of just encouraging you, but also like now somebody, you know, gets to know who Jesus is more and Mm -hmm. is pursuing them. I just think that is really cool story. Thank you for sharing. (laughs) Um, And today is kind of special because I want to pose some challenges to you guys, the, the listeners and the viewers who are kind of joining along with us um, this month. My challenge is kind of a, th- a threefold type thing. I uh, kind of want to propose that if you, if you haven't or you are or you're nervous, whatever it is, uh, three things. I challenge you in three areas. I challenge you one if you, you know, don't or haven't prayed just kind of one-on-one, you with the Lord in, in, the, in the closet, in the dark room, I challenge you to, to start doing that. The second challenge is if, you know, maybe you haven't prayed in a group setting, maybe you haven't gotten a couple brothers or sisters with you and just prayed, I challenge you to, to start doing that. Maybe it's starting a prayer group. And then the third challenge is is kind of what Isaac had, had done is, is whatever, um, you know, Travis, maybe, maybe there's somebody who you feel like you're tugged. Like there's this conviction. I need to ask this person to pray. Yeah. Maybe it's like a coworker who shares something that's really difficult in their life right now, or someone in the church who shares something that's really difficult right now. So often the response is, Oh, I'll, I'll pray for you about that. Um, instead of saying that just say, Hey, can we pray right now for that? Yeah. And just get, just, take the opportunity to pray for someone when there's a need right then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, th- so those are our, our three challenges. Um, and I myself am going to, am going to be thinking about this and trying to do this, uh, this, this month. Uh, but just to kind of kick things off, incredible story, Isaac, why, why do we pray? Why do you pray? Yeah. I think it's like, there's many different reasons sure. why I may pray. Um, one of the big ones that Jesus shows us in the, uh, uh, the Lord's prayer is, uh, to pray about, uh, a, a prayer of confession mm-hmm. to be able to let go of the sin that we have in our own life. And yeah, I am, I'm actively trying to practice that like each day, you mm-hmm. know? And I think, I think a lot of times it's where I do something that I'm not necessarily proud of or, uh, you know, maybe I respond in a way that's not loving Mm -hmm. and that kind of like sits on my heart. And I feel like I can't really take that off until I go to God Mm -hmm. and I pray. And then I think also in some cases, like going to your brother or sister, whoever it is that you've wronged and like being able to like, just tell them you're sorry. Like, Hey, I did this thing. And, uh, you know, I, I don't feel that wasn't the right thing. That wasn't the loving thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry about that. Um, also prayers of Thanksgiving are awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, there's been lots of like highs and lows during my time at college. And I guess a big high coming up is I'll graduate in a quarter. But um, I think uh, those those moments where I feel like God is blessing me in my work through friends. Um, there was recently a friend who got an internship that me and my roommate, uh, who's also a Christian, had been like praying for oh, him wow. about. That's awesome. And uh and yeah, he, he's like, uh, yeah, the Lord really helped me out with that one. And he's not a Christian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. He, he's not a Christian. Um, but yeah, just being able to give thanks to God for how he's answering prayer and also just the daily provisions that we have in a life, which also the Lord's prayer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'd say like those are two big things, confession and, and prayers of thanks. Totally. Yeah. W- what, what about for you, Travis? Why, why do we pray? I really, I really feel like uh, prayer really is just simply connecting to God. You know, it's the the whole point of of the gospel is that it's it's redeeming us so that we may be in relationship with God again. It's restoring that relationship, mm-hmm. and I feel like prayer is at its core simply relationship. Like if you do look at the Lord's prayer, you know, He starts by um, acknowledging the the holiness of the Father, mm-hmm. and it's like that's that's part of our relationship is acknowledging who He is. Um, we see further in the Lord's prayer of just like you were saying, Isaac confession, like that's, that's part of restoring relationship is confession and repentance. Mm -hmm. Um, you see, um, asking for things, you know, that's part of relationship, um, is recognizing that God is the giver and we are the receiver. Mm -hmm. Um, you have, um, like you were saying, Thanksgiving, that's, that's part of relationship with God is including him in the things we're happy about, the things we're sad about, the things we're experiencing. And, um, and just living alongside of him, like it says in mm. the minor prophets of, you know, what does God require of you, but to walk humbly with your God. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think prayer really is that connection point of how we simply connect with God um, in this state, you know, really just talking with God. And so yeah. Yeah. Um, just like how, you know, the way I connect with my kids is yes, you know, tickling and wrestling with them, but it's also talking with them and hearing what they have to say. Mm. And, um, you know, uh, and having them come to me in, in good things and in bad things and things they need and things they want and things they already have, but they're excited about, um, things just about their day. Mm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. one of the beautiful things about prayer, we always talk about, you know, Paul says, you know, pray without ceasing. Um, uh, one of the cool things about prayer and that same idea is that the, the instance of the temple and stuff was meant to never go out. It was meant to always be going. And God says that our prayers also rise to him like incense. And mm-hmm. so it's just this really cool picture of like wow. our prayers should always be going that mm-hmm. they should always be, um, you know, yes, you have times where maybe you, you set aside specific length of time to pray, but in a sense, your prayer should just go throughout the day yeah. and it should never be closed in a sense. It should always be kind of this open. Yeah. A few more things that I want to just say God and keep moving on. And Oh Great. yeah. God. Like I think that there's, yeah. it's part of the relationship is pausing and, and stopping and listening, but also speaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sure we've all heard it like many different ways, but just this idea that it's like prayer isn't necessarily this kind of liturgical. Is that the right word? Liturgical. Liturgical. Yes. There we yeah. Go. <laughs> uh, liturgical <laughs> thing that we do. It's, it's more of this like, when we are in relationship with one another, it, how do we share that relationship? We talk and yeah, we, right. and, and so that's kind of this idea of prayers, like you just being in relationship with the Lord mm-hmm. and talking and listening and, and waiting and kind of like what you're saying all day long, just mm-hmm. kind of be, be mindful of like, he's actually with you, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and l- right. let's, you know, let's talk. Yeah. And so, um, there is a benefit of like, of, not liturgy itself yes. in, in this context, yeah. but in the sense of like following the Lord's prayers example or following the acts Absolutely. model, following the fist model, because if you are just like, Oh, well it's just a conversation. And I'm not saying you're saying this, but people who might say, Oh, well it's just a conversation. Well, yeah, but you lean towards only talking to God about these yeah. specific things. And the nice mm-hmm. thing about all these different ways people have, you know, taught to pray, whether it be taken from the Lord's prayer or all those other models that I mentioned or, or mm-hmm. many others is that it forces you to talk to God about things that maybe you tend to not talk to God about. Right. It's kind of like how we encourage you to read the whole Bible. Um, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's very similar in that, you know, you could pray all the time, but never pray about, you know, the things you're thankful for. Never oh, pray sure. about the things you need. Never pray about right. the things of just recognizing God's holiness. There's, mm-hmm. there's so many aspects of, um, of prayer, things you can pray for that if you just leave it at, well, it's just a conversation. Therefore I shouldn't add in these other, you know, specific, um, 
I don't want to say tactics, but like ideas it's, or it's, strategies it's like or, or systems. It's almost a slight yeah. structure, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I, I like to think of it as like a, a respect thing, like a mm-hmm. structure of respect. Like when I am talking to God, you know, I want to respect like who God is. Yeah. And mm-hmm. just like when you're talking with, you know, your friends, you want to respect them in a way. So there's different ways. I'm not just going to have that surface level, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, mm-hmm. I appreciate you saying that. So mm-hmm. that actually kind of, makes me wonder it's like how how should we pray what are some mm. ways like how how should we pray yeah sorry did you have something you wanted to say oh yeah go ahead um i guess one thing to note before as isaac's gathering his thoughts um one thing to note is um with any spiritual discipline i like to put it that there's a private version and a public version mm. mm-hmm. and um both are needed private versions edify hundred percent just you as you draw near to God mm-hmm. um, and public versions can edify you, but they're primary for discipleship. And so um, to That's give an good. example, if you only prayed privately, yes, you'd be edified. Yes. You glorify God, but then you would never be teaching anyone else how to pray. And also we're told to simply pray publicly. We're told to pray together. Um, but if all you do is pray with others and pray publicly, you, your personal life will suffer. Mm -hmm. And so that goes for every single spiritual discipline because at some point, spiritual disciplines need to be passed down. They need to be taught. They need to be um, given by example. And so you can't have any spiritual discipline be just 100% um, private, but you Mm -hmm. also can't have any spiritual discipline just 100% public because then your your private relationship with God suffers. And so just as a a note, um, as we just keep going, but thoughts about (laughs) how we should pray. Yeah. So one of the things that I've been thinking about lately in my own life is praying and entering into prayer without distractions. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think, so for for myself, I usually pray like in the morning, I read a little bit of scripture, pray, and then I go on with my day. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the end of the day, before I go to bed, I'll read a little bit of scripture and pray. Mm. Um, And I guess those are like the structured times Mm -hmm. that I'll pray. But I think for various reasons, I can be distracted in those moments. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm like, you know, I, I'm in school right now, so maybe I wake up and I'm like, oh, I got all these things to do. Yeah. All yeah. these things are, you know, uh, it's going to take me all day. I don't really want to do X, Y, Z. But um, something that I've been trying to practice is uh, before going to God in prayer, just taking a moment to settle down. Like, And that usually looks like some deep breaths. You know, maybe maybe I'll sit in silence for 30 seconds before mm. I start praying. Because mm-hmm. I think that that kind of allows me to let go of those things for a moment in yeah. my mind. I think I also have, like, ADHD tendencies. <laughs> so that also helps kind of, uh, yeah, I guess calm the sea and uh, allow me to enter into prayer with God. So I'd say that's, like, an yeah. important part for me of how I pray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. It kind of reminds me, I, I'm the same way. I'm very, like, my mind can be in a thousand different mm-hmm. places at once. And I think it's it's really coming at like I don't I don't ever want to pray because it's just this this something to do or, mm, or the, right. the right thing to do. I, I never want to do that. Just like I never want to do anything in ministry or for the Lord that is just disingenuous. Mm-hmm. And so for me, you know, when I'm taking time to pray, I like sometimes I'll just pray and just ask God like prepare my heart, like soften my heart right now mm-hmm. to, to focus and to just really give this to you because prayer is not for us. Mm-hmm. And I think oftentimes I, I, I myself get kind of distracted and it's like, oh, I, 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 like, I, I just, you know, I'm just going to pray real fast. And it's like, no, like I'm going right. to sit down. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, the Lord has been really gracious and merciful to me because sometimes like I'll be like driving and I pray a lot when I drive. Yeah. It helps calm my road rage a tendencies. Lot people, a lot of people do, I think. They're like, yeah. oh, God, don't let me run into that person. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but I also like to listen to like podcasts or audiobooks or music. Mm-hmm. And I really only listen to music if I'm driving. I just don't, I don't know why. I just, I'm not the type of person that has headphones in or whatever. And sometimes I really just want to listen to music but I get this kind of like conviction, like there's something that's going on. It's like, I I really should be like praying and just like speaking to the Lord and listening to God. And sometimes I'll just feel like I just, I just don't want to do it. And actually just recently, like a week ago, this experience happened to me where I was like, I don't really want to pray right now. I really like, I'm into this like new kind of worship music 
and I really <laughs> want to listen to this stuff and it's worship God like like come on like yeah. and he just said like that like you like pray like you got to pray for this thing right now because this is like actually happening and it's like okay yeah. so I did and usually I have like 15 minutes for my commute I had a 30 minute commute that day <laughs> and so like I prayed and I hit traffic and I just kept praying and it was like okay like you know this was good like I, I got to hear from the Lord I kind of sat there and I was sitting in traffic it was total silence and I just felt like God was like here's your opportunity to listen to music you're welcome yeah. and I got to it was really cool long story meant nothing sorry that I brought it up but um I just think you're you're right it's like prepare our hearts we should never go into anything especially prayer disingenuous you know mm-hmm. it's like right. why are we really doing this it's 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 not for us it's for mm-hmm. him yeah i think one of the things that helps me um with that like focusing and like that adhd and stuff like that is setting a timer which sounds terrible because it's like oh you're gonna set a timer when we pray well yeah because then i'm not checking my phone like and if i know like I can pray for this long, then I have to go do this thing or I should do this thing. Um, then I'm not checking my phone to be like, what time is it now? And I'm not like, I, it helps me like setting a timer for five minutes and praying for those five minutes is way more beneficial than just like being like, well, I will pray for 10, but I have to check my phone to make sure it hasn't been 10 minutes. Hmm. Like it right. just helps me actually focus and not be like scattered during that time. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I mean, that's, that's a big thing for me. Yeah. That makes well, a lot of and, sense. And the Lord is so faithful to, to provide in like in those situations. Like mm-hmm. I've had countless times where it's like, I've had something that I needed to go do, but right. it's like, I need to pre- like prepare for this and I need to go to the Lord first. Like mm-hmm. this is more important. God is more important than this thing right now. And I've always just like, I, I'm not the type of person that does that. Like I don't set the time yeah. maybe I should start uh, <laughs> but the Lord like I'll finish praying and, and I'll look at the clock and it's like exactly when I needed to like have had been done so it's really cool yeah um, yeah. W- so sometimes in prayer especially when it's with like what Travis was saying there's that the uh, by yourself kind of thing mm-hmm. and then there's that outward uh-huh. mm-hmm. and it's I love that you said discipleship I really like I feel like I've heard that before but I, I haven't really thought about it in that way mm-hmm but it's so true. It's like when we pray with our family or our kids or whatever it is, like yeah, it's, it's teaching. It's teaching in a yeah, way as right. well. And so, yeah. Why is that though sometimes really difficult? Like, why is prayer difficult? Even I guess you know, like myself in the car. Why? Why is it difficult sometimes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I I think it can depend on who you're praying for. I'd say for family, and it's like. For the people that you're close to, it can be difficult for a different reason than for Mm. the people that you're not close to. Mm -hmm. I'd say for the people that you're not close to, a lot of times you don't know how they're going to react. Yeah. So, uh, so that can produce a lot of fear, the fear of the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would say with people that you're close to, maybe you can feel like that might affect your relationship with them or you, or, uh, I guess something that I experienced growing up, um, not desiring a relationship with the Lord. And then in high school, really coming to realize that I need God and that I want God. Yeah. Um, I think being able to pray for like some of my siblings felt uncomfortable in the beginning just because that wasn't who I had been consistently throughout my life. So there was definitely like this feeling of like Isaac's different. Yeah. Like, why is he different? Mm-hmm. You know, and that judge, kind of coming judge up. in a certain way. Yeah. Maybe he thinks he's like better than us or, or some reason yeah. like that. Like, and there's just that tension. And I think that's yeah. kind of the principle that Jesus is along when he says, you know, a prophet's not acceptable in their hometown. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in that same way that there can just be weird feelings mm-hmm. that come yeah. up. And I think that that is also what can make it difficult to pray for people in your life, especially maybe people who don't really see you within that like Christian, like they don't see you as a Christian. Yeah. yeah. Like especially at work, like that can be really difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember uh, in, so I was doing research in a, in a chemistry lab and uh, the uh, PhD student who I was underneath. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not a Christian environment at all by any <laughs> means. And uh, multiple times I felt like, God wanted me to pray for him. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. But it, I felt very uncomfortable doing that. <laughs> so I did it the first couple of times. Um, and then eventually I was, eventually I did. Um, but like that uncomfortableness was built upon like the 
context that they understood me, which is, you know, mm-hmm. you know, this is just a student. He just like comes here and does research. Yeah. He's okay. What he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, that, that familiarity made it difficult in that situation as well. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think in, in general, like the prayer itself is hard naturally because it's a spiritual discipline and it's a spiritual thing mm. and it's a very important spiritual thing. And so Satan would desire, um, the opposite. And so mm. I think to a certain extent there's spiritual warfare that we should always remember whenever it comes to spiritual disciplines. It's like, why is this hard? Well, there's the layer of, you know, maybe there's a certain aspect of like skill. I don't want to say skill, but like when you think of any spiritual discipline, there's, there's a uh, normalcy and like um, just certain skill acquisition of like, I'm comfortable doing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but on top of that, there's a layer of spiritualness. And so there's a certain layer of um, it's hard because Satan desires it not to happen. So, I mean, there's mm-hmm. always gonna be that aspect. Yeah. Um, but then there's also the aspect of, you know, the, the people I've taught to pray or I've struggled with prayer. I've talked to about it. Um, one of the things I love remind people is that, um, prayer is a lot like driving where if you look at the, uh, the windshield, you're just going to crash and <laughs> prayer is the windshield. Like we're supposed to be looking at God when we pray and prayer is merely like the windshield, the thing we yeah. go through to connect and, and talk to God. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I think sometimes people can just focus so much on prayer is that, that essentially they crash. And so it's difficult. And when you add the layer of like, you're saying praying in public, whether it be for one person in a group in a small group or in a larger context, um, you, it's easier and easier to focus on the windshield yeah. because you're worried about, you know, the people around you, you know, judging the words you're saying or how accurate the theology is or just all these different things that you could be worried about. Um, sometimes in small groups, I know we've all had this concern before where your mind wanders during it. Hmm. And so then you're like, I'm about to pray for this thing. Oh, did someone else already pray for that? Oh no. And then you're like, you're already like, you're, th- you're totally shot. And you're like, what's happening? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, there's so many layers, but I think it mainly comes down to just worrying about what other people think. Yeah. You know, mm, right. and that's yeah. just, it's a good point. It's something that we true. all struggle with as humans. And I think like when I try to think how, like how do we overcome that? I, I love that whatever the Lord is calling us into and is asking us into, it's not for us to, to say, I can't do that because mm-hmm. like the Lord will provide for you and if it's for you to fail in that moment, it's for you to fail in that moment. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like That's totally good. like getting outside of yourself. And the thing is like God calls all of us to pray. Mm-hmm. Like it's, that's, you know, if you're thinking, does God call me to pray? Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so as, as kind of we're talking about prayer, what about when it comes to fasting? Because this is kind of this month where we're talking about, you know, fasting and prayer. Why do we even have fasting and prayer, and why is it why is it not prayer and fasting? I probably have said prayer and fasting many times, and I'll probably continue to say it this month. Yeah, whatever. Both roll off the tongue pretty well. But fasting mm-hmm. and prayer, what what's the relationship with with fasting and prayer? Mm. Yeah, um, I think that like fasting puts you in an uncomfortable state, and I know that when my life is uncomfortable and things are not going according to plan. <laughs> um, I think about how, you know, what can be done to remove that. Mm -hmm. And I think with fasting though, it's unique because you're choosing to be put in this like weakened state Mm -hmm. and in the appropriate like action or response to that weakness is like to go to God. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it can be like humbling, you know, like I'm humbled by my own weakness. Yeah. Um, A lot of times it can look like, like provision, like God help me to get through this day, Yeah. you know, be my food and uh, help me understand that whatever like physical hunger I have, like my spiritual hunger is so much greater than mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Um, yeah. Did you have any thoughts, Travis? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously we, we pray even when we don't fast, but when we fast, it's, um, you know, it's the letting go of physical things or letting go of earthly things to hold on tighter to spiritual things. And so it very much goes in hand in hand. You know, I love, um, it's been said many times. I remember Chuck Lynn said it as well of, you know, uh, fasting without prayer is just starvation. And, um, (laughs) you know, whenever we fast, whether it be, um, if you fast food, if you fast social media, if you fast sugar, whatever you're fasting, um, if you aren't complimenting that with prayer, you're just 
starving yourself of whatever thing you're Mm -hmm. removing from your life. Right. And you're not holding on tighter to God. And it's kind of like, um, you know, it's been said many times that repentance is not simply turning away from sin, but turning to something else. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if we fast without prayer, it's not actually fasting anymore. It's, Mm. you're not turning to God. You're just turning away from something to nothing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, prayer you do throughout, every day, hopefully throughout your life, um, fasting, um, needs prayer to complete the circle. Otherwise Mm -hmm. it's just this, you know, half baked, um, just by itself, nothing. Yep. Really good point. So what would you say to someone who might be listening or watching, uh, Mm -hmm. that's feeling like, I don't, I don't really know how I feel. Like I'll, I'll just continue to just pray by myself or whatever it is, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, when we think about those three challenges, when it's the difficult one, we're thinking, I don't know if I really want to do that. What would you say to that person? Mm -hmm. I think about how, uh, like we said earlier, there's the internal prayer that is Mm -hmm. for self edification. And then there's also the prayer that is both to edify yourself, but also to edify the people around you. And I think about how, uh, what a great opportunity there is to show people God's love through Mm -hmm. prayer. Um, a lot of times when, uh, when we hear, you know, when I hear someone's going through something challenging, Mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking, well, you know, is there a way that I could, you know, pray for this person? Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, then I'm thinking, well, maybe I should ask them if they want prayer. And a lot of times people's problems can't be solved by your own like help. Like I I don't have the capacity to help someone who's going through a broken marriage, Mm -hmm. but I have the capacity to, uh, to be able to pray for them in a way where they get to see God's love for them yeah, and yeah. see how God uh, is there in the midst of whatever is going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we look at the Bible, people are greatly encouraged by just the fact that God is present and with them. And when they see that, they're able to uh, they're able to find peace in their circumstances. Mm-hmm. I think about Job who uh, when he came in the presence of God and God showed up and said, this is who I am. At the end, he was able to find peace in Mm -hmm. all the tragedy that he had faced, how he had lost his family and his business and uh, the personal illness that he was facing. Yeah. And I also think about Haggai uh, in, or um, Hagar, uh, uh, um, uh, blanking on his name, his slave, uh, Abraham's slave. Oh, Hagar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hagar. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hagar. And how she was out in the wilderness yeah. about to bear a child out of water. And she's just wondering, like, you know, God, where you are? Where are you? And then God shows up and he says, I'm the God who's with you. Mm-hmm. And how she was encouraged then to continue on yeah. and able to have peace in really a terrible circumstance. Yeah. I mean, yeah. could you imagine being weeks out from bearing your child in the middle of nowhere with nothing? That's scary. But uh, I just think about how uh, prayer. Uh, how, how, uh, if you are wondering, you know, why should I pray for other people or like, Mm -hmm. I would, I would think actually, you know, how can we bless other people Mm -hmm. through prayer and how can we share that with other people and being able to see the people in your life who need that, um, I think is like, uh, a very important part of prayer, uh, the way that it's others focused. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not about you. Yeah. Well, it's not even about like what you say, like ultimately, the, the thing that blesses people most when when you're praying around others is, I mean, you're essentially pointing to God. Mm-hmm. And um, and they're not focused on you so much yeah. as the, the words you're saying is pointing them to Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, when you are praying publicly, um, they shouldn't be walking away going like, oh, that person was so eloquent. It is a wonderful thing. But it's right. like, wow, I saw God in a bigger yeah. light than I yeah. ever have. Yeah. And my faith was encouraged by how wonderful our God is. And, you know, I was encouraged that I can go to God in these ways. You know, if you, um, if you're part of a home group or maybe a Bible study that prays together, you've probably experienced people's very first time ever praying in a group. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, um, the, the people I know who have come to me later and been like, that was the first time I've ever prayed in a group or anything like that. They've never regretted it. They've always been like, <laughs> this was one of the most wonderful things ever. Yeah. And so like, if you've ever been blessed by someone else, uh, praying and seeing God, um, in a, in a more full light because of it, um, 
recognize that it wasn't because that person was special. It's because God is special. Yeah. And yeah. you got to w- essentially enter into someone else communing with your same God. Yep. And mm-hmm. so, like, why would you take that away from someone else? Yeah. It's, totally. something, it's something I totally took for granted as I grew up because, like, I was kind of raised. I went to youth group, all that stuff. And in youth group, it's like you pray in a group sometimes. Mm-hmm. And right. so I got to kind of handle that struggle of, like, I don't want to do this way early but if you are someone who you know you know coming to christ in your 30s or 40s or whatever it is like maybe you've never had that like what travis was saying mm-hmm. never had that experience but maybe a home group is is that time yeah. and i can imagine it, it's it's scary because i remember even my, sure. my first time doing it, it's like like people are gonna judge me i'm, I'm thinking about <laughs> all these different things but the reality is like when you take that step out of, of in faith the Lord is provide just like I was saying earlier. It's like he, no matter what, whatever He's called us to do, He's going to provide in that right. aspect, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's a huge encouragement. And it's like one of the things I think about when I'm talking to somebody who I feel like could use prayer. It's like I can't help in that marriage, but mm-hmm. I know the one who can. Right? Can yeah. I, yeah. Like let's pray together. And I, it's it's so wonderful. Just the to hear different stories like yours where you just go and and pray for someone or you're praying in a group and people really are changed by that because that is in a way showing the it's it's showing the glory of god in that Mm -hmm. moment right that's that's what we're called to do so um my uh yeah let's think about those three different challenges i hope that after hearing kind Mm -hmm. of this conversation Mm -hmm. uh if you're watching and listening that Maybe those three challenges are a little, little bit more uh, doable. Maybe mm-hmm. you're thinking it's, I, I, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. And you know, again, that's, you know, praying with the Lord one on one, praying in a in a group, and then maybe seeking out if somebody needs prayer and you feel that nudge to to ask him, hey, can I pray for you right now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that last one, I just want to encourage you. Like, you said seeking out. Yeah. But for the most part, opportunities come to us. Like, think of all the amount of times that people have come to you saying that you know, life is hard, that they're scourged in some way, that they really need something. Sometimes people even flat out ask, could you be praying about this? And you just yeah. say, yeah. And we pass that up. We pass up opportunities all the <laughs> time. We don't, this isn't even something we need to seek out. This is something that comes to us regularly. We ought to just take it. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's good. So before we close, <laughs> Travis, you, you have some, some important, you know, kind of key takeaways from yeah. this. Yeah. Just wanted to, to make sure that it was, you know, said in just a quick, you know, one, two, three fashion of just um, things you need to remember. Um, the first is in, in Matthew 6, there's an expectation that we pray, that mm-hmm. Jesus says, mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. pray, pray like this. It's not if you pray. If you're one of the people who really like praying, um, regardless of your propensities, regardless of your personality, regardless of anything, regardless of how long you've been a Christian, yep. yeah. there's an expectation you pray. Um, uh, the other thing that uh, just specifically from Matthew six is that he says, don't pray like this. Don't pray like people who are seeking attention, who think they'll be heard for their long phrases and mm. words. Um, he says, he says, don't pray like this. And then he enters in the Lord's prayer that begins our father in heaven. And so just remember that you're heard, not because of your words, not because of your status, not because of the length of your prayer or any other reason, but the, but except for the fact you're his child. Yeah. yeah. So those are, that's a very important thing to remember is that you're you're heard because you're his child. You're not heard because you did really good today. You're yeah. not heard because the you haven't messed up way. in a while. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and so, but then lastly, um, again, focus on God and not your praying. That prayer is just the windshield. And if you focus on your windshield while driving, you'd crash. So and the second you begin focusing on your your prayer itself for the the words and all those kind of things, um, you, you lose focus on God, which is the person you're talking to. Like how weird would it be to have a conversation with someone and then to just be like so focused on the things you're saying that yeah. you're not even talking to the person anymore. <laughs> yeah. And in any other context, you'd be like, man, that person is like, they've missed the whole point of a conversation. Right. And I'd say the same thing. You missed the whole point of prayer. If you are so focused on the words you're saying, not on the God you're saying them to, that, um, you know, obviously there's there's times to pause. Make sure you're saying things well and saying like saying things accurately, the way that is actually in your heart. But we also recognize that in Romans, it says that God knows our inward thoughts. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he wants you to be looking at him. You know, he wants you to be talking to him and listening from him. Yeah. And so uh, just don't miss out on that. That's good. Yeah, definitely. Man, Isaac, thanks for coming on. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it. It was really cool to hear kind of the, those different stories and 
kind of your heart behind everything. And thank you so much for listening and joining us as we talked about prayer and what that looks like in fasting and prayer. And mm-hmm. uh, next week, we're going to be kind of switching it back to, to fasting and how we fast. Mm-hmm. So uh, we just look forward to that one. And so thank you for joining us. And uh, as always, God bless. God bless.